So I'm Lucy Hyde and I'm a PhD student at Rothamsted Research and the University of York. And my research, which is funded by the BBSRC, explores the potential to modify the plant cell wall of important crops to make affordable, renewable biofuels. So when Rudolf Diesel invented the diesel engine 120 years ago, um, he had a vision that his engine would use a clean source of fuel rather than the uh, polluting steam engines of the time. And um, his original engine actually ran on peanut oil, which was extracted from the peanut plant. And this was the first biofuel, um, so a fuel which uses the energy stored in plants for power. But petroleum-based fuels, which we extract from oil found beneath the Earth's surface, quickly became the most economical fuel option. And as we all know, these release polluting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and contribute to global warming. Scientists are now looking for um, an alternative fuel that's carbon neutral. And this means that the greenhouse gases that we release into the atmosphere when we make or use the fuel is equal to the greenhouse gases that we take out of the atmosphere. And one alternative fuel is bioethanol. Currently, we make bioethanol by using the food part of the plants. So, for example, the grain of wheat or a head of corn. Um, and it's relatively easy to extract the sugar from these parts of the plants. But this takes food away from the food supply to make fuel that you could have potentially eaten and drives food prices up. And this is known as the food versus fuel debate. So there's actually um, a great deal of energy in the form of sugar in the parts of the plant which we don't eat, so the stem. Um, and the stem, which is often considered the waste product of the plant, could actually be one of our um, best sources of renewable energy. So it's currently very difficult and expensive to extract these useful sugars from the cell wall because of the strong bonds which form within it. Um, I'm working on changing the chemical composition of the cell wall so that we can more easily extract these sugars. And scientists at Rothamsted have identified a key gene which we think is responsible for forming one of the strongest bonds within the cell wall. And this gene is called GT619. And I'm studying this gene more closely to find out if it's doing what we think it's doing. For my project, I'm working with a plant called Brachypodium, which is a model organism for important crops like wheat, rice and maize. But it's easier to work with because it's smaller, easier to grow and has a shorter life cycle. I'm looking at GT619 in Brachypodium in two experiments. The first experiment um, is increasing the levels of GT619 in some Brachypodium plants and decreasing the levels in others using a technique called genetic modification, which I carry out in a controlled laboratory environment. Um, we can then look at the plant cell walls of these plants to find out whether the strong bonds in the cell wall have increased or decreased. My second experiment is looking at how environmental stress affects the cell wall composition. Um, and particularly, I'm looking at mechanical stress, which um, simulates wind and rain in the natural environment. And we want to try and find out if this mechanical stress affects the uh, amount of sugar or the um, amount of bonding within the cell wall. In the future, we hope to be able to use these findings to genetically engineer or selectively breed important crops like wheat or rice um, with an enhanced ability to break down their cell wall to produce affordable, clean biofuels to use in our vehicle engines.